My name is Mohammed Gorgistani, and we are going to watch Sister Hearts. This film kind of came together after we like kind of searched the whole country for a story that revolved around the challenges of re-entering society after being incarcerated. And we found this woman right here, Miriam, was just an incredible person, a person that is the ultimate protagonist in that she really takes full kind of charge of her life and takes adversity and creates from it. Mary Henderson. Uloho, U-L-O-H-O. Took a lot of effort to get our crew into this space. And at this point, you know, there was only three or four of us that were allowed. You leave all your belongings at the front. You kind of just, the air of the world just changes once you step inside of a prison. Thank you. How y'all doing today? Hi. You ladies go through a lot. This scene was rooted in More something Miriam does a lot, which is she goes back to the prisons she was actually at and other prisons in New Orleans coach. and talks to women about trying to basically give them now, hope while they're still behind you, bars, give them a sense of purpose. I love this scene right here where she just looks up when she hears Miriam say, yourself. you guys are beautiful. We're going to start in this corner here. And I want you to just introduce yourself and tell me something good about you. It was a challenge to shoot because you can even maybe see someone's head tucked back in the corner there. That might be my head. I'm outside ducking down, and our DP is inside, and he's the only other person in the room other than the women, and we're on a radio with earpieces, and we kind of shot-listed and blocked the room. All the women are sitting in very specific places we wanted them to sit, but everything else is happening as we capture it. I'm loving, I'm caring. I'm very loyal until you cross me. Okay. I just remember all these. <laughs> my memory of this scene is just me and Dante's ear being like, profile shot of this woman, profile shot of that woman. Get a cutaway of this. Now do a three shot. Now do a two shot. Now do a front closer. It's just total chaos for an hour and a half, but he did a hell of a job. And Miriam kind of walked us through some of the things she does, which kind of allowed us to, we kind of coached her a little bit to like be like, hey, if you're going to say something, wait till Dante, our cinematographer, is kind of reset. But she did just an amazing job of doing that with us, and she was a great collaborator. Right. Now, ladies, let me share something with you. There was a time in my life when I didn't feel there was any good in me at all. And the reason for that is because I was sitting on that side where you guys are today, not so long ago. And this is kind of this moment where she reveals that, so, you know, she used to be in the same shoes that these women are in. And home. that kind of kicks off I the had film. I to go inside myself and find something good about me because I felt like trash. So, you know, at the gate, we kind of wanted to go back and have Miriam re-examine her, the origins of how she blazed her own path of redemption. She kind of talks about the economic challenges of getting out of prison and how the system really doesn't set you up to succeed. And it almost incentivizes you to tend up back in prison. And that's why recidivism rates are so high. And especially with women, I think that's such an untold story about the women's incarceration experience. So many women have to deal with so many things when they get out of prison. But one of the things they have to worry about on a different level than men do is their own safety. And as a woman, I had to think about my safety in a way that a man wouldn't have to. I didn't know what to do. I was alone, I was scared, I had no one. I knew there were women that was coming home from prison that was in the same boat that I was in. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, everybody. Time to this is what she up. does, you know? This is like Miriam and her element giving a safe space to women who have been recently released from prison and trying to give them the infrastructure to be successful. And, you know, watching this scene, I remember kind of this was my first chance to get to know some of these women. You know, I think Teresa here, she had just been, she had been in prison 20 years and this is her second day out. 
Co, she had just gotten out after about two years for just a marijuana offense. Okay, look, let's everybody, let's start helping set the table. Okay, we need some plates. I got it. She was so happy. That was really interesting. It's a blessing to be out of here. So, you know we have a uh, reunion this weekend. She gonna be okay. here. You gonna be here, right? She don't have a choice. You coming back. If not, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> she probably heard about it. But yeah, this is what Sister Hearts does. Like, you know, it's a thrift store that's really the this structure the for everything store. Mary's about, which is being an entrepreneur, having economic stability, and providing that opportunity for other women who didn't have a place like Sister Hearts, you know, when she got out of prison. It may only take a week, it may just take a month, or up to a year. But I'm gonna make sure that you have a place to stay and a job. It's not just the physical incarceration that causes damage. It takes time to adjust back to society. And this is like very specific stuff that Miriam makes time. everyone do. I mean, she wants this place to be when really treated with care. And she I believes that, you know, her whole thing was like, you know, it's a way for them to learn how to care about things I again. And that's one of the pr things prison does to people is it makes them stop caring about stuff. You see, in prison, you're broken. You know, one of the choices we made in this film was to go black and white, and I think this is a scene that really makes that option pay off. This is like in a apartment. <laughs> Actually, no, this was at Miriam's house in a hallway. If you looked, if the camera turned around 180, what you would see is just a bunch of uh, catering, <laughs> a fridge. But because we had this little space, we just, we kind of had this like the girl with the pearl kind of reference there. I used to close my eyes and I would always see myself in nature. Miriam often talked about escaping mentally while she, she was in prison and just imagining time. herself in nature. And we kind of wanted to make yeah, that literal so here. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, you know, Cissé and, and kind of literal stuff, but this felt rooted in something that was a little bit more poetic in its origin. So it felt good to get a little more literal with it. What it would feel like if I could just leave this place. And what you don't see here is all the mosquitoes. <laughs> New Orleans has hella mosquitoes. 13 years out of my life, I spent behind bars. And over half that time, I spent in solitary. One of the things that I wasn't sure was gonna work 100%, but I'm glad it did, is it's kind of like, we kind of weave this scene of her at prison throughout the film. I think there's three times we go back to, and this is the second time. You know, I, I want people to really see, like when Mary first stepped in this room, people are separate, they're distant. Like some women have their arms full. I mean, she's being very real with them. I and mean, she's telling them that there's no excuses once you get out, because once you know you got someone like me on the outside, the only thing that's stopping you is you. It was incredible to watch her gain the trust of those women in real time. And I love transitioning directly from that scene to like this scene with Miriam sitting behind. You know, Miriam was in prison and now she is a boss. West Judge Perez in Araby. This all started when I was homeless, living as a squatter. Selling junk and this is stuff they do. I mean, they go and they drive around the blocks and things people leave behind or want to donate, they'll get on Craigslist. And this is amazing because it's such a metaphor and she'll, she'll talk about it here, about taking things that people have discarded, things that society has discarded and bringing them back to life. For me, it was really important to become very knowledgeable about the subject matter on a very local level. Louisiana is like the epicenter and the capital of incarceration, not just in America, but pretty much the world per capita. We had done about five or six like two hour calls with Miriam to kind of just get her get her story. And you know, by the later calls, I'm kind of like almost building an outline of what the film's gonna be. I think you can hear about an impact someone like Miriam has on people, but then once you see it in real life, you almost like, if you remove Miriam, you ask yourself like, well, what would these women be doing? And I would ask them like, you know, where would you be right now? What would you be doing if this opportunity at Sister Hearts wasn't here for you? And you know, they, they really didn't know. 12 bucks. 12? Yep, $3 each. That is smart. Who is the 92ers? I have no idea. All right. Maybe you should Google it. Oh yeah, Google 1992 caps. Here's what I found on the web for 1992 caps. 
I don't think I did that right. Okay, who got a better Google than me? I do, but okay. mine doesn't talk. I kind of love that scene. In prison, you're told what to do almost 24 hours a day. When your brain is under that type of discipline year after year, you lose the ability to think on your own. You know, she says it right there, that, that ability to kind of think on your own is lost. And I think she really so, yeah. empowers the women to kind of put things where they want, how they want them. I mean, that was the crazy thing for me was realizing when you're in prison, you literally are punished for thinking. They want you to just follow rules and that's it. And then you get thrown back into society and now you're expected to think again. And they also set the prices. The shorts is $2.99 and up. The highest is going to be is like $5, okay? I remember just now witnessing these moments and the seeing how much joy everyone had to just serve others. I mean, that Miriam always said, you can't be... And you can't worked. be a criminal if you're serving others. And I think, like, she knows that, you know, some of the folks that come in here have, have had society put them in certain situations that they've had to and learn to survive and adapt to their circumstances, but that they can't bring that into the role of customer service. And it just really reflects, I think, how much a system is at fault versus the individual. They have purpose. They're part of something. They can redefine who they are as an ex offender. <laughs> and I'm not down here to put you down, to look down on you, to talk. And you know, this scene opens with that tear, and I think that's such a amazing shift because you can see Miriam has kind of broken these women down and built them back up all within like a hour. All y'all got to remember is Sister Hearts. Sister Hearts. And these women who were so separate are now suddenly so, I mean, this is it right here, like they're, they're one. At the beginning, when Miriam asked them, tell me something good about yourself, we're having a hard time thinking about anything to say because they haven't thought about even that idea in a long time. To get into a place where they're being so positive and hopeful, it's, it's all amazing. Sister Hearts for Life. 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 When I was in prison, I met a lot of wonderful women. So this is something like I wanted to set up. I, you know, I wanted to have the women have their photo taken and I thought that that would be a scene to be able to film too. And I was trying to think of a way to kind of introduce the women to the film because Miriam's spoken for everybody. And I wanted this moment where they finally speak for themselves to kind of be a, a transition and place us back into, into their world. I was sentenced to two and a half years for a marijuana charge. When you go back into society, you have to start all over again. So many things has changed, you have to catch up with the times. The transition to go to, to color here was really rooted in this idea of like, when you're a formerly incarcerated person, you're kind of participating in a different world. But moving it back into color is, I think, was for me a reminder that this is actually part of our world too. And we have a responsibility as a society to contribute to the success of people who have, you know, done their time. You know, we are a part of society, so we are responsible for helping them succeed and giving them, giving them a second chance. And wherever we intersect with them at a place of work, or if we have an opportunity to vote on something, if we have an opportunity to patron places, to support places like Sister Hearts in our own communities, this isn't some distant world. Like, this isn't the same world that we're living in. We're not depending on society to rehabilitate us. We have taken the reins to rehabilitate ourselves. You know, just trying to bring this film home here with like a reunion. And I think if you think back to some of the early images of the film and how hardened some of the people are and to get to this point, I think like is all about just, for me, it was also just awesome. And it was just dope to see, you know, Miriam have such a good time with, with these women that, you know, they were all in, behind bars at some point and to see them free to feel valued, to have a camera there to, to, that, that makes them feel seen. I mean, it's, that's what it's all about. 
how wonderful they are. I want them to know they matter. Just because they've committed a crime, they're no less of a human being. They can regain their dignity. They can be successful after incarceration. You know, that's just the arts. You know, if people are in New Orleans, I definitely tell them to stop by. Uh, they've, they've been doing really well. Miriam just got a grant to build a decarceration center where she can continue her, her kind of passion of, as she calls it, decarcerating people, helping them transition successfully. Yeah, and then this was, you know, made with, uh, with Square and it's kind of an amazing collaboration where we got to work on something rooted in kind of economic empowerment, but really that was really the only prerequisite, I guess, to, to, tell, to tell an amazing, I think, story about a, about a really incredible woman and, and a group of incredible women in a business that I think is doing all the right things.